Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars, and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the wire pickup makers use when they wind the coils for their guitar pickups. The two most important factors to consider when selecting coil wire for a pickup is wire gauge and the type of insulation used to coat the wire. To begin with, let's consider the first factor, wire gauge. Pickup makers tend to favor 42, 43, and 44 AWG wire. AWG stands for American Wire Gauge, and it's the most common way to refer to the diameter of a wire. The smaller the number, the thicker the wire. And the reason pickup makers like to use these gauges is because they can wrap a bobbin with a strand of wire long enough to generate a signal useful to an amplifier. So what drives a pickup maker to choose a particular wire gauge for a specific pickup? Well, the simple answer is tone. Of course, it is more complicated than that. Regardless of whether I'm making humbuckers, P90s, or Stratton Tele style single coils, the length of wire I can fit onto a bobbin is partially determined by the gauge of the wire and the dimensions of the bobbin itself. Since the bobbin's dimensions are fixed and can't be changed unless I fabricated one myself, I have to choose a, a gauge of wire that will allow me to wind a coil with a wire long enough to generate that useful signal strength. 42, 43, and 44 gauge wire works very well for this. However, there's a big difference between those three sizes of wire when it comes to the strength of the signal and the frequencies they can carry. Using a thicker wire, like 42 gauge, allows the signal generated by the vibrating strings to pass more easily through the wire from the start of the coil to the finish while taking most of the bass, uh, mid-range, and treble frequencies along for the ride. With thinner wire, like 44 gauge, the signal has to squeeze through a smaller diameter cross-section. As a result, the signal encounters increased resistance, which is also referred to as inductance, and that can filter out some of the frequencies, especially in that mid-range and treble spectrum. Naturally, one might assume it's better to use thicker wire in a pickup bobbin, and in my opinion it is. However, using a thicker gauge means you'll fill the bobbin with a shorter length of wire, and that means a weaker outgoing signal. So there's a couple of potential trade-offs to consider when selecting wire gauge for your pickups. If you want to use a thinner gauge to get a more powerful signal, you may have to give up some of the mid-range and treble frequencies. If you don't want to lose those frequencies, you'll have to go with a thicker wire, and that means you'll have to sacrifice some signal strength. Now a question I had when I first started making pickups was, can I use wire thicker than 42 gauge or thinner than 44 gauge? Well, the answer is yes. However, with regard to using wire thicker than 42 gauge, the signal strength is really gonna suffer unless you fabricate a bobbin that's taller or wider than normal or you consider adding a small preamp to boost the coil's outgoing signal strength, which would mean changing the pickup from passive to active. As far as going thinner than 44 gauge, not only will you likely lose too much in the way of your mid-range and treble frequencies, but you may have some trouble sourcing wire that thin. And even if you are able to find uh, wire thinner than 44 gauge, you'll need to consider how hard it will be to form a coil without breaking the wire during the winding process. Now let's consider the second factor, insulation. There's an endless debate among guitarists, luthiers, and pickup makers regarding the impact of coil wire insulation on tone. Some say yes, it does affect tone, while others say no, it does not. I'm not going to try to put this argument to rest, but what I will do is explain what's available and how the different types of insulation may affect the outcome. While there are dozens of different types of insulation for coil wire, the types most commonly used for making pickups are plain enamel, heavy forearm var, polyurethane, and polynylon. Plain enamel and heavy forearm var have been in use as insulation for coil wire since the early days of the electric guitar. 
they're used today as a nod to both an expectation of performance as well as traditionalism. In fact, there are a lot of pickup makers out there who will tout the use of wire insulated with plain enamel and heavy form var as part of their recipe for making vintage style pickups. Fun fact, if the wire they're using was made sometime in the last uh, few decades, it's going to be very different than the wire made prior to the 1960s because of improvements to the manufacturing process. Wink, wink. Polyurethane and polynylon, on the other hand, are the more contemporary choice. The nice thing about polyurethane and polynylon as an insulation is that you can melt it off the ends of the wire with a soldering iron. This makes it easy to solder the leads to both ends of a coil. With plain enamel and heavy forearm var, you have to scrape off the insulation with either sandpaper or a razor blade before you can solder on the leads. So how does the choice of insulation potentially affect tone? Well, to answer that question, we have to consider the thickness of the insulation as well as its chemical composition. Now with regard to insulation thickness, I have a general rule of thumb. The thicker the coating, the less length or the shorter the length of wire I can fit on a bobbin. For example, if I wound two bobbins, one with 6,000 turns of 42 gauge heavy form of our wire and the other with 6,000 turns of 42 gauge poly nylon wire, the bobbin with the heavy form of our will have a shorter length of wire than the bobbin uh, wound with the poly nylon wire. That's because the heavy form of our insulation is thicker and takes up more space on the bobbin than the poly nylon insulation. The difference may not seem like much, but with thousands of turns of wire on a bobbin, it adds up to a lot. It's important to note that regardless of the type of insulation used, uh, they're usually described as either single build or double build. Single build means one coat of insulation, and double build obviously means two coats. I normally use single build no matter what type of insulation I choose. However, I always check the manufacturer's specification for the insulation thickness. Another factor to consider regarding insulation thickness is how close together or far apart the copper core of the wire is with each turn. Thicker insulation means each turn of the wire's copper core will be spaced further apart than the wire if the wire had a thinner coat of insulation. The closer the copper core is to itself with each turn, the higher the level of inductance and capacitance in the coil, which reduces some of the audio frequencies, namely in the mid-range and treble in the outgoing signal. Finally, we have the chemical composition of the insulation to consider. In theory, there has to be a difference. In reality, it's questionable that anyone can actually tell the difference with their ears. If someone claims they can hear the difference between heavy form var and poly nylon based composition alone, stand back because you're going to get poked in the eye with their growing nose. There are too many variables between the vibrating guitar strings and your vibrating eardrum to really make any conclusion about the chemical composition of the insulation. To be able to do this, a scientific experiment would have to be conducted where all of the variables, with the exception of the composition, were neutralized. I'm sure uh, wire manufacturers have conducted similar tests, but I doubt they've actually done anything with respect to guitars. Maybe some of the pickup manufacturers have done some tests like this. I don't know. So after considering wire gauge, insulation thickness, and composition, where does this leave us? To help you decide on what wire to choose, I have prepared some charts for you to ponder. <laughs> the first chart shows us how signal strength is affected by wire gauge. As you can see, the signal strength drops with an increase in wire thickness. The second chart shows us that wire thickness can affect the bass, mid-range, and treble frequencies as well. The third chart shows us that insulation thickness can also affect the bass, mid-range, and treble frequencies. And finally, the fourth chart 
shows us that the composition of the insulation is really a big question mark since it's almost impossible to know for sure without some kind of rigorous scientific testing. The bottom line is, if you plan to make pickups for yourself as a hobby, go with the thickest gauge of wire while keeping the signal strength in mind and stick with a single build polynylon insulation for ease of use. If you plan to make pickups as a business, however, you'll need to consider all of the available gauges, the type of insulation, and the insulation's thickness. The beauty of selecting wire for making pickups is that you can mix and match all these different factors to achieve almost any tonal outcome. And I hope this video and the charts I provided will help you to better understand coil wire and how to make the right choice for a specific situation. If it succeeded, give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to post your comments and questions down below. And as always, if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube guitar building channel, Click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell icon so you'll be notified by email every time I post one of my new guitar building videos. Take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.